Good morning, all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I'm sorry, your attendance. Afla. Ajmina. Amaya. Christmas. Adulia. Rishya, Jyotish, Present Miss, Kartik, Kavya, Present Miss, Nachiketis, Neeraj, Rangit, Present Miss, Vaishna, Vaishnav is there? No. Vaishnav? Vaishnav is not joined. Anjali? Shruti? Afla is there? Ajmina? Present Miss. Then Madhulia? Present Miss. Rishya? Present Miss. Karthik, Neeraj, Vaishnav and Vaishna. Okay. See, you have to join one minute earlier. See, it's sharp 8.30. Uh, I mean, I'll be taking the attendance. You have to answer it sharply by 8.30. So by 8.28 or 8.29, you have to log in. Okay. Okay. So we will start. And uh, only I have told you people to call me yesterday. The first five register numbers only I had called. The remaining had not called. I don't know what is the reason for that. Okay. Now today, register number six to 10, you have to make me a call. Okay after seven o'clock. Now, just we will continue with our today's topic. Now, last day we were discussing about the connecting devices. I have told you have got different categories. I mean, all the connecting devices, they are operating in various layers of the OSI model or the TCP IP model. Now, you have at the lower layer, that is the first layer is known as the physical layer. Below the physical layer, you have uh, passive hubs and on the physical layer or uh, the one which operate on the physical layer, they are called it as the active hubs. And the one which cover both physical and the data link, they are called it as bridges. And the one which cover physical data link and network, you can call it as routers. And the other one is the gateways which will function or which will operate in almost all the layers of the OSI or the TCP IP model, right? Now, so these were the basic devices that we were using in a network backbone. Now, and today we will be just learning a new topic called virtual local area network. Virtual local area network. In short, you can call it as VLAN, okay? so. Uh, in the beginning classes, we have defined what is a local area network. Now, what is a local area network? Local area network is a network of computers connected within the same area. And if you want to connect different local uh, physical networks, you are making use of the connecting devices. Okay. Now, this is just a physical view of your LAN. <laughs> you have got various segments of the LAN. Uh, I hope the slides are visible for you. Just I'll be just maximizing it. So this is, you are having various LAN segments and all these LAN segments, they are connected either by a switch or a bridge. And if you are making use of different physical networks, you will be making use of routers. So this is just a physical view of your local area network. Okay, now what is VLAN? 
VLAN is nothing but virtual local area network. Now, how computers are connected in it? So, when you are considering a VLAN, VLAN, uh, the computers or the servers or the networking devices, how they are connected is they are logically connected regardless of their physical location. You are not worrying about where the uh, devices are scattered. If the devices are scattered in different places also, that does not matter in a virtual LAN concept. The meaning is you are connecting your devices or computers or the uh, connecting devices logically across a network or you are logically grouping them into separate virtual networks. Right now, what is the importance of this VLAN is you can have improved security, you can the traffic can be managed easily, and the network can be made simpler. So, these are the sum of the advantages of virtual local area network. One is improved security, traffic management is simpler, and also the network is made simpler. Okay, so VLAN stands for Virtual Local Area Network. You are viewing it as a group of devices on different physical LAN. How they are communicating, configuring is they are configuring through software rather than hardware. And they are extremely flexible. Okay, now how does this VLAN work? You can just see in the diagram, just uh, just see it and uh, I mean, I will be just telling uh, how it has been connected. Now, imagine you have a three-storied building. Don't confuse with the diagram and the thing what I'm telling it. Just imagine you are having a three-storied building where you are having computers that belong to several departments. The departments, I'm considering it as a publishing department an accounting department and the security department. So each floor, you will have computers that belong to the di different departments. As an example, in the top floor, you will have computers on uh, based on publishing department, security department and accounting department and a mixture of a group of computers. So similarly, in all the flows, you are making use of, I mean, you are having computers connected based on the different departments. So I can tell all are mixed up together. That means they are mixing up with the different departments on the same floor. So I have told about three departments, publishing, security and accounting. Assume all the, three, uh, you have a three-story building and you have systems in each floor and all the systems in each floor, they are mixed up with the other department system. Okay, now, so all these computers from the di different department, they are connected through a switch. So what does it mean is all belongs to one segment in a LAN. You are having a LAN and all are belonging to one segment. Now all the network, they broadcast traffic and they are mixed up with the other department. So when each are broadcasting, they will be mixing up with the signals with the computers of the other department. Okay, so there is a congestion there. Now, if you want to separate the network broadcast traffic between the departments, that is, if you want to separate each one, the possibility is through the virtual LAN concept. Understanding what I'm telling, you have a combination of computers in each floor, they are mixed up, they will be broadcasting the traffic. That means in each floor, you will be having traffic from the three departments. So if you want to separate the network broadcast traffic between these departments, and if you want to separate from each other, the possibility is by using virtual LAN concept. Now how you are doing is, you will be making use of a VLAN switch. Okay, so VLAN switch, you can create several virtual networks to separate the network broadcast traffic. That is what it is being shown in the diagram. Okay, so you have a virtual LAN for the accounting department. You have a VLAN for the security department. 
and we you have a vlan for the publishing department so the meaning is the traffic between the departments are separated you are having specific ports available in your vlan switch since all the uh, connections all the things are going to uh, i mean that belongs to the same department is going to a single port in the vlan switch so there is no uh, traffic problem in this okay so that is the concept of virtual a local area network so the meaning is if you want to separate the devices or separate the broadcast traffic between the mixture of several computers in each i mean from each other you are making use of this vlan concept so you are creating virtual networks in order to separate the network broadcast traffic so individually you have got vlans for all you have vlan for accounting vlan for accounting i mean sorry publishing and vlan for security so the traffic between the departments they are separated okay so that is the concept of virtual lan virtually you can create it okay so that, that is how the vlan works now you have got various types of vlan one is based on layer 1 you can call it as port based vlans on layer 2 you will be calling as mac address based vlans and layer 3 you have protocol based vlans that means layer 1 physical layer layer 2 is the data link and layer 3 is the network layer and you can have different uh, i mean how you have to differentiate in in each layer so in physical layer that is layer 1 vlans they are port based vlans the meaning is they uses a physical layer port number on the front of the vlan switch so that you can assign your computers to vlan segments if you are considering a vlan switch you will have different ports and each port and only the network manager must know the which computer is connected to which so separate ports you will have and you have to connect it based upon that okay and that is based on the number port number okay so the advantage of this layer 1 vlans is you can configure it in a fairly manner and it is a straightforward one okay so this is the first type of layer 1 vlans that is the port based vlans now when you are considering layer 2 layer 2 vlans they are based on mac based mac address you know you have a mac address that is uses the data link layer address to form the vlans advantages is you are it is simpler to manage when computers are moved and you don't require any configuration based on the mac address you can connect your create your virtual networks okay so that is the second type now the third type is the ip based vlans based on the one which operate in the network layer so uses the network layer address to form the vlans network layer is also called it as the ip address so based on the ip address you can configure a virtual a local i mean local area network okay and here also you don't require any configuration so these are the different types of lan how you are able to create one is based on ip based or port based or mac based address based and this is the diagram that shows a multi switch lan means more than one switch you are making use of in order to create a virtual network okay so this is the example of multi switch vlan now what is the advantage of multi switch vlan is increased performance and increased security option right now what are the benefits of vlan the main benefit is you can organize it logically rather than physical that is what i have told the traffic management is easier in this case traffic management in the sense suppose you consider a network where many computers are connected now suppose what happens if more computers are added up so it is little bit complicated so if you are logically connecting the uh, systems based upon the different departments you can easily uh, configure it right so that is the benefit of vlans you can organize the lan logically instead of physical connection right 
Now, why you use LAN is that is what I just told. Now you have increased performance, security is more. You can it is of reduced cost. Administration is very simple, and you can form very virtual work groups also, right? Now VLAN operation actually the you can operate in three ways. One is based upon the automatic manner. The other one is static manner, and the other one is semi-automatic manner. So manually, semi-automatically, and dynamically. Dynamically means automatically. So in manual configuration or in static configuration, what the network administrator will do is he uses the VLAN software to manually assign the stations to different VLAN setup. So manually he is doing everything, right? In automatic configuration, the stations are automatically connected or disconnected from a LAN. the administrator will be having some criteria and based on that he will be automatically configuring it now semi automatic means it is in between manual configuration it is somewhere in between a manual configuration and an automatic configuration right so this is how uh, i mean these are the different types of vlans and these are how the vlan operates what are the various configurations in university question it has been asked define a vlan and what are the various configurations for vlan okay so i repeat vlans they are known as virtual local area network local area network you know that many systems connected together in the same geographic area but in vlan you have computers you have routers you have servers you have the what how they are connected is they are logically connected they are not worrying about the physical location of each device even even if they are uh, dispersed in different places it is does not matter what it does is a virtual lan network if they can logically group them into separate virtual networks now important advantage of vlan are improved security it is making the network simpler and traffic management is easy easy in that and i have told how a vlan works so it is uh, mainly based upon different departments see you have you can just see in this diagram here you can just see you have an engineering van you have a marketing vlan you have a sales vlan so, so imagine all these uh, the computers that belongs to different uh, stations they get mixed up so it is very difficult so broadcast traffic you will have various congestion in that so in order to separate each wing so you are making use of the virtual lan concept so for engineering vlan you are making use of a few ports for marketing vlan you are making use for sales vlan you are making use so you can separate the network broadcast traffic between different departments from each other and that is the concept of this vlan okay understood what is vlan concept yes or no Yes. Okay. Okay. So this this these were all about the third module. I have just completed the third module. This was the last topic, and I have told last week we will be having a revision class after this. I don't know how many of you have gone through it. I have sent the PPT in the last class. Anyway, I'm just uh, telling you the assignments. I will be uh, publishing it today. One week time you have got. see last time two or three have not submitted the assignment that should not be the case of now because i am giving you enough time last time also i have given given one week time so each day you write one question that is more than enough understand it and write so that it will be useful for your university exam also okay so all are based on all the questions are based from the university question paper only so try to answer that in a perfect manner the notes of module 3 the ppts the question bank what all related things are with module 3 i'll be just publishing it today in linbase okay so you can just go through now so we will just have a revision class now on based on module 3 with what we have started anybody remembering with what you have started we started with logical addressing right so logical addressing it is a 32 bit address one second
Okay, so uh, what I have told us, we started with the logical addressing. So logical addressing, uh, how many bits you have? You are making use of for logical addressing, Ajmina. Ajmina, you are calling it as internet address also. What is the length of your IP address? Ameya is there? Yes. Oh, yeah. Tell, what is the length of your IP address, IPv4? 32 bit. 32 bit. So what is the total number of address space possible? 32 bit address space. Hmm? Address space, total number of addresses available in IP address, IPv4. Hmm? 2 raised to 32. 2 raised to 32. 32. Okay, now you can notate it in two ways. One is the binary notation and the other one is the dotted decimal notation. Okay, so in binary notation, what you can do is each octet, I mean, uh, you will be displaying it in the form of binary bits. Now, each octet, you, will, you are referring it to as a byte, right? And the same binary notation you can notate in another manner that is called it as the dotted decimal notation. So dotted decimal notation is for each eight bits you are approximating it to the corresponding hexa number and I mean so decimal number and you are notating it. Okay. And I have given you some problems in order to find out the error in this IPv4 address that you have to look into because some, once it was asked. And you, you should be able to know how you have to find out the class of each address. Now, Adulya, how many classes we have got in IP addressing? How many classes we have got? Adulya is there or not? Yes, miss. Yeah, tell. How many classes? IPv4. IPv4. IPv6. Classes. And what are the different classes? Addressing internet. You know about uh, different classes in IPv4? You have got five different types of classes. What are they? Hmm? Drishya. Class A, Class B. Class A, Class, class B. B. Class hmm. C. Hmm. Class D and? Class E. e. Yeah. Huh? Drishya, how will you identify whether an address is a Class A address? How will you identify whether you will you, are, you have given an IP address? Hmm? Hmm. Now, how will you identify whether it belongs to class A? Yeah, tell. Russia, answer it. Net ID. Net ID, it is, you have to consider it for the first byte. Mm -hmm. I'm asking, you are having, suppose 192.38. Uh, I mean, 252.5.15.111, you are given an address. Uh, so, uh, sorry, 225.5.15.111. How will you identify the each class of an address? First is zero. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Class. That is zero. The first bit is zero in the first byte that belongs to class A. Class A. And if it is class B, how will you identify? Hmm? If it is class B, Ajvina. I see. Yeah. How will you identify class B addresses? Class B uh, one zero 
10 10 if it is in dotted decimal notation what is the range 128 to 128 to uh, 191 191 okay now if it is class c 110 110 okay now what is the dotted corresponding dotted decimal notation Mm, 192 to mm, 223 uh, 223 okay so uh, you have to identify if you have given an ip address you should be able to identify to which class it belongs that is very very important that range you have to remember okay now on also after that i have just told the concept of classes and blocks you have got different block size as well as the total number of uh, addresses in each classes and i have told what is the concept of net id and host id right how will you find out what is the net net id and how will you find out what is the host id now take a problem all of you that is the university pro question problem uh all of you take down in your paper notebook or whatever it is what you have now find the net id and host id all of you apply is there vaishna yes, vaishna is absent is she having exam yes okay. exam yeah take down find the net id and host id find the net id and host id of the following ip address find the net id and host id of the following ip address first one 114 34 dot 2 dot 8 you have to find what is the net id and host id of the following ip address the first question is 114 dot 34 dot 2 dot 8 now the second one is 132 dot 56 dot 8 dot 6 132 dot 56 dot 8.6 and the third question is 208.34 dot 334 dot 54 dot 12 i repeat the third one 208 dot 34 dot 54 dot 12 now karthik neeraj and rangeet you have to give me the answer karthik neeraj and rangeet karthik has to give the first one neeraj second and rangeet the third one others you just calculate it find out what is the net id and host id just recollect how you will be able to find the net id and host id kartik kartik is there or not yes yeah tell tell it is not much difficult one you can seeing the thing only you can answer it net id 114 yeah that is uh, okay first tell me to which class it belongs class a class a okay so you have the class a uh, net id 114 yeah host id nu parayanadu 34 uh, 
So you have to write it. The first byte it is the net ID, and the remaining three bytes are for the host ID. Okay. So you have to write it in a way like 114. That is the first byte denotes the net ID, and the remaining three bytes denotes the host ID. Now Neeraj. Miss. Yeah. Tell me what is the net ID of the second problem? Net and net ID and host ID. One three two. Ah. Uh, okay. First, tell me to which class it belongs. Class B. Class B. Okay. Now tell me in class B what you have learned. Oh. How uh, many? One, how many? Host ID. Ah, uh, host ID. I mean, sorry, net ID. Net ID one three two. Only one three two is there. Inna five six. Class B, you have got two bytes. You are considering for the net ID, and the remaining two bytes are for the host ID. So here, one thirty two dot fifty six dot eight dot six, the first two bytes, that is one thirty two dot five six, that denotes the net ID, and eight dot six, that is the remaining two bytes, it denotes the host ID. Okay. Okay. So you have to write the first two bytes. It is net ID. And the next two bytes, it is the post ID. Now, third one, Rangeet. Yeah, answer me to which class it belongs. The third address. Class C, L. Class C, L, L. L class C, class C. Class C. Okay. Now, in class C, how many bytes are used to define net ID? Three bytes. Three bytes in class C. You are making use of three bytes as the net ID and one byte as the host ID. Okay, so understand it. How you you have to uh, write it when once the net ID and host ID is asked. Okay, so this was the one problem. I think for six marks, uh, it has been asked. So you should be able to write that. Okay, so after that, you have studied the concept of masking. Right, you have learned what is classless addressing. Very, very important. You have to remember what is subnetting. What are the advantages of subnetting? Sometimes supernetting also will be asked. So you should be able to write it. So supernetting means many class C blocks. You are grouping it and making that a single group. So I have told what is the advantage and the disadvantages of each class. See, in class A and B, majority of the addresses were wasted. But class C, it was not satisfying the needs of the organization. Okay, so there comes the concept of supernetting and subnetting. So you have to remember what is that. Okay, now I have told you how you should be able to find out the subnetwork address if your IP address and the mask is given for you. Okay, now take down a problem based on that. Find the subnetwork addresses. Find the sub network address for the following. Find the sub network address for the following. First question. First question. IP address. IP addresses. One twenty five dot thirty four dot Twelve dot fifty six. I repeat, IP address one twenty five dot thirty four dot twelve dot fifty six. Now the mask value, mask is equal to two fifty five dot two fifty five dot zero dot zero. I repeat, mask is two fifty five dot two fifty five dot Zero dot zero. That is your first question, right? Now the second question is IP address. IP address one forty one dot one eighty one dot one four dot one six. I repeat. IP address is one forty one dot 
181.14.16 and your mask value is 255.255.224.0 i repeat your mask value is 255.255.224.0 Everybody written the question. Hmm? What thing you have to find out is you have to find out the sub network address. Now Shruti has to give the first answer and Vaishnav has to give the second answer. Make it fast. Now, how will you identify, how will you, how you are going to find the sub network address? Hmm? If your IP address and if your mask value is given for you, how will you identify your sub network address? Shruti can answer. Make it fast. It is only four minutes left. Shruti. Shruti is there or not? Shruti is not there. Yeah. Shruti? I'm missing range of the contact with her. Okay. Return the question. Question is here to talk. Okay. Tell me how will you able, how will you are going to find the sub network address for the first problem? Class A, I'm a 255.0. How will you find sub network address? You are having the IP address and you have the mask value. So if it is like that, how uh, you have to understand the boundary level masking as well as the non-boundary level masking. So boundary level masking, the value will be either 255 or 0. So the first question is like that. Like mask, the value is 255.255.0.0. Now what do you have studied? 255 value will be retained and 0 value will be remaining as 0 itself. So if that is the case, the sub network address. Those who have found anybody has uh, done that? It's 125. Yeah, 125 dot 34 dot 34 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0. 0. Yeah, very good. How you are able to find out is 255, the value will be retained. So the first byte, it is remaining as it is, 125. The remaining second byte is also 255, so that 34 will be remaining. Now, the next value is 0. So whatever the host, if the mass value is 0, the value will be 0 in the subnetwork address. So the answer is 125.34.0.0. Now the second one, how will you find out? You have to find out whether it is a boundary level masking or non-boundary level masking. Vaishnav. Hello. Yeah. Any other name? First identify whether the mask is at the boundary level or not. Tell tell. First value is 255. So that 141 is remaining. So first byte will be 141. Now what is the second byte? Mask value is 255. Again, that second byte one, is remaining. So 181. One boundary value 141 dot to 181. Uh, dot. Now the third value is 224. Dot. Now how will you find out that? 224, it is a non-boundary level mask. So what you have to do is take the binary representation of 224 
and take the binary representation of 14. You have to end each bit. So what answer you will be getting, that will be returned. That will be coming here. Has anybody got that answer? Afla, did you work out? No, Miss, I'm doing. Okay. Anybody is completed? Maybe pass because the other staff has joined. Yeah, it will be 141.181.0.0. Just check your answer. When you are ending, you are getting it as zero. So you will be having 141.181.0.0. Okay, so check it and tell me in tomorrow's class. Okay, thank you. Uh, write your assignments as well as prepare for the unit test. Thank you.